Are you considering buying an R2R DAC but frustrated by high prices? Do you wish you could find an R2R DAC for under $200? Well, my name is Aaron and today I've got something that's turning heads in the audio world, the FIO K11 R2R DAC. Today we'll explore its R2R technology, unique features, and how it stacks up against the competition. Let's get started and find out if this budget R2R DAC is right for you. First, it's important to note that FIO has a, another version of the K11 that's not an R2R design, but actually chip-based. So what's the difference? Well, it all comes down to design. The original K11 uses a Cirrus Logic DAC chip rather than an R2R design, which uses resistor ladders consisting of 192 resistors to convert digital signals into analog. Does that mean R2R sounds better because of this different design? Well, stay tuned and I will tell you how this version of the K11 stacks up to other DACs that I have here on hand. Now, because of the use of this resistor ladder design, R2R DACs require a lot more parts and labor to produce, and therefore they often cost a lot more money than a standard chip-based DAC. For instance, I spent $750 on my Dinner Frips Aries 2 DAC, and at the time, it was really the most affordable R2R design that I could find. So now that we have the K11 R2R DAC coming in at $160, we have to unpack all of the features you are getting for the money and determine if a DAC price this low can really live up to the hype. It's important to note that the K11 is really more than just a DAC, and for that, I highly suggest you spend time reading the manual when setting it up in multiple configurations because I promise you it will save you some time and embarrassment. I set this up in two separate ways, one as a headphone amp and another as an external DAC paired with my shit CD transport. Now, one thing I enjoy about the K11 is the large feature set for such a low price. I mean, the most obvious thing is you get a nice looking LCD screen and even the ability to have it light up in RGB mode by staying constantly on or by pulsing in a variety of colors. Of course, those lights can be dimmed appropriately or even turned off based on your preference, but I thought it was a fun touch to have these features even at this low price point. Thumbing through this menu by short pressing the volume knob shows you that this unit can do a lot. And again, I highly suggest reading the manual to make sure you get everything set up correctly. For instance, you can use an oversampling mode or a non-oversampling mode. You can select USB working mode and make sure you've selected the correct input of which we have USB, coax, and optical. It's also worth noting that the K11 comes with an external custom 12 volt switching power supply that ensures the purity of the power and supports strong power output. This results in a stable, clean power supply and a high quality sound. I really loved using the K11 as a headphone amplifier. It paired easily with my MacBook Pro via USB input and I didn't have to download any drivers where it can handle a 384 kilohertz, 32-bit DSD, 256 sampling rate. Now, according to the manual, the K11 works on Windows 10 and above with the download of a free driver on their website. It features three gain levels, so it was easy to power a variety of headphones I have on hand from the easy-to-drive FIO JT1s at 32 ohms to the newly released R70X refined headphones at 470 ohms. When listening via headphones, I first want to point out that the treble is relaxed and smooth, but not in a way that sounds deficient. This smoothness might be perfect for headphones that you have that could possibly sound bright. Now, as I get older, I like hearing more detail in the upper frequencies, but I'm also more sensitive in that range, so I like an amp that can provide detail, but not in a way that's harsh or bright. For instance, my wife and I just saw Weezer last week, and one of the opening acts was the legendary band Dinosaur Jr., and anyone familiar with their music know that J Mass's guitar solos can sometimes hit very, very high notes that sound bright and harsh on any sound system. Now, I recently listened to their song Ocean in the Way off of their album Farm, 
and the guitar solo was easier to listen to with the K11 than other amps that I've used in the past. I'm also pretty sensitive to any sibilance, so I listened to the Cowboy Junkies cover the Velvet Underground Sweet Jane, and the K11 handled the S sound that's repeated over and over with the word sweet just fine. Now overall, mid-range was adequate, and I'm not a huge fan of slamming bass, so the K11's sound signature was perfect for my taste with the headphones that I have on hand. Now quickly, while comparing the R2R DAC with my shit stack of gear, which is a Magni Heretic and Modi 3 DAC, I confirmed my thoughts of the sound differences between R2R and chip-based designs. Again, the K11's trouble is more relaxed, but in a way that makes it easy to listen to, while the shit stack brought that extra detail and analytics back into play. I think if you listen to each of these amp and DAC combos and were someone who preferred analytical detailed sound signatures and found a smoother treble response kind of annoying, you would lean toward the chip-based shit stack. But if you are someone who is less about detail and just likes a fun, easy to listen to sound, the K11 would be an interesting alternative. Let's talk next about how the K11 performed as a standalone DAC in my home stereo system. It's important to note that there are some necessary menu functions to scroll through in order to change this over from a headphone amp to a standalone DAC. And don't ask me how it took me an hour to figure that out, okay? Don't ask, thank you. Let's just move on. Most importantly, you need to switch the output to put the unit in preamp mode. You can set it as pre, which allows you to adjust the volume on the K11, basically using it as a preamp, or you can choose LO, which fixes the volume on the K11, and then it can be adjusted by your separate preamp, which is exactly how I used it. I connected my shit erd with the K11 via coax with a max sampling rate of 192 kilohertz, 24 bits. I listened to Sarah Jarosz's album, World on the Ground, and the K11's relaxed playback was perfect for this album. Sarah's vocals and background vocals sounded great. This recording has a nice airy texture to it, and that was present with this budget DAC. Honestly, I couldn't find any issue at all using the K11 as an external DAC in my home stereo system. It handled every CD I threw at it with ease, whether it was rock, jazz, classical, or even hip hop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I paid $750 for my Denifrip Series 2 DAC, and you might be wondering if I now regret that purchase. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of the giant killer type reviews where you try to prove a budget DAC will outperform one three to four times its price. In general, the Ares 2 really has the ability to further expand the soundstage and improve the placement of instruments over the K11. It also doesn't taper off as much in the treble. So even though both of these have a warmer feel to their sound signatures, the Ares 2 performs without losing as much detail as the K11. But that being said, keep in mind, I chose an R2R DAC like the Ares 2 because I thought this design would suit me better for CD playback given I'd spent the last 10 years or so listening to mostly vinyl only. It's a little easier to transition from vinyl to CD when you have an R2R DAC better controlling some of the digital sheen that can come with listening to CDs. I would have loved to have had the opportunity to start with the K11 at just $160 and then upgrade to the Aries 2. Now in regards to other chip-based stacks in this price range from brands like Topping and SMSL, again, I feel as if those DACs are going to be a touch more analytical and detailed, especially in the upper frequencies over the relaxed sound of the K11. Overall, those DACs can sound more neutral. Now, some folks try to peg the R2R sound as a warm tube-like sound, but I think that that's going a little bit too far, especially at this price range. But I do think some people will hear the K11 and think it leans a little warmer over a straight neutral sounding DAC like a topping or an SMSL. 
One last note, I tried both the oversampling and non-oversampling modes, and I couldn't pick one that I believe I should claim is better than the other. That's always going to be based on your listening preferences and the gear you use. But again, I'm impressed that a sub $200 DAC like this one gives you both mode options. So should you buy the K11 DAC? Well, here are the people that I think should buy this DAC. First, if you are someone who has spent a lot of time listening to vinyl records and wants to incorporate CD playback back into your system, but is worried that it may sound a little too digital or harsh, like I mentioned earlier, an R2R DAC is a great way to venture back into CDs without running away with your ears, getting tired from listening to any sort of digital sheen and fatiguing sounds. And an R2R deck like the K11 is gonna be a great option for those people, especially at this price point. Second, if you are curious just what an R2R deck sounds like, but you've been scared away by the high prices by companies like Denifrips, this now gives you a great option to just get in the game at 160 bucks and try to determine for yourself if you can really hear that much difference between R2R or chip-based DACs and try to determine which one is right for you. But if you are someone that's looking for a giant killer product, oh, I, I really hate that term, and you're hoping a $160 DAC will way outperform one that at three to four to 10 times its price, I don't think that you should buy the K11 with that purpose. But if you're someone that has spent that much money on an R2R DAC and absolutely love the sound, and you're interested in adding something on a more budget level to a secondary system, especially if you're interested in using headphones along with it, then the K11 is really hard to beat at this price point. Now, many times in this video, I've talked about my shit urge CD transport and the Denifrips Series 2 and how I've combined those to help me incorporate CDs back into my home stereo system after years of listening to mostly nothing but vinyl. If you'd be interested in hearing more about that experience, you can do so by watching this video here.